Hello, my name is Natasha and today I will be doing a step-by-step -step eyelash extension tutorial on a lovely client today. Hi, welcome. You can go ahead and take off your shoes and lay on the table. Be careful, watch your head on the light. So I just wanna make sure you're comfortable. This is just a little support for your knee and back. You can put your feet comfortable. You can just relax your arms a little bit. Okay, so the client welcoming process. The first thing you notice is that I was friendly, I was smiling, and I quickly put her into the massage table. This is called a massage table. It is in fact portable and adjustable. Typically, the client does not wear her shoes onto the table. Typically, we use some kind of clean bedding on the table. Here are just some generic sheets, a bottom sheet and a top sheet. I make sure to keep a lint roller just to lint anything that might be on the sheets because you want them to appear clean. You'll also notice that I accommodated her. You want the client to be super comfortable because this is a two to three hour procedure and you want the client to be very, very comfortable. In fact, you want her to be so comfortable that she feels comfortable falling asleep. Okay, in terms of furniture, you want to use a chair or a stool that has wheels. Why? Because you're not going to be able to ask the client to keep shifting her head throughout the process. You're going to have to be willing and able to move around to access different parts of her eyelashes as well as the table over here with the supplies on them. Hello, so we're going to start the semi-permanent eyelash extension procedure now. The first thing we're going to do is hand sanitize our hands. It's very important that you sanitize your hands and it's very important that you do it while the client is here so that she feels confident that there is some kind of cleaning protocol in place. The next thing we're gonna do is sanitize our tweezers for the same reason. So I'm using Citrus 2, a hospital level disinfectant that I have some in this bottle and I'm just gonna quickly clean off my tools. The next thing I'm going to do is figure out what lashes I'm going to put on her. As you well know, lashes come in four curls, J, B, C, and D. This is a lash tile. This is a tool that you can use to place your lashes out. It has the slots already numbered, and it's just a stone that's a good accessory to eyelash extension application. This is a lash tile. We're gonna place the lashes that we're gonna use for her today on this tile. You have any kind of preference about? Um, I like when they start like shorter on the inside and gradually get longer on the outside. Okay. And, um, the natural look, pretty much. Okay, so what do you mean by natural? Um, not too full. Okay. So Later in this tutorial, we're gonna talk about lash styling. So today we're gonna to use this tray of B lashes. And I'm taking off the length that I'm gonna use on her. So I've taken off the seven. The 10. the 12 and the 15. As most of you know, lash trays typically come in standardized lash trays that range from seven millimeters in length to 15 millimeters in length. Because she's expressed to me that she wants her lashes to be super long on the outside, I'm gonna open this other pack of lashes here which contains some 17s.
So I'm just putting my little strip of 17s. onto my lash tile. So now I've essentially created a mini work area with my lash tile, my lashes, my airplane pillow here for support, a more traditional bedroom pillow so that she can be comfortable and I can have the lashes right here. Sometimes you'll see lash techs put the tape on the client's forehead. I believe that's uncomfortable for the client to have products literally on their body. So I prefer to place the lash tile right here. Tweezers. The tweezers we're gonna be utilizing today are two straight tweezers. This black tweezer is a lot thinner. This silver tweezer is a lot thicker. We're gonna use the silver tweezer to pick up and we're gonna use the black tweezer to isolate. iPad placement. Most lash artists have a difficult time placing iPads on and utilize tape in addition to iPads. Using both tape and iPads is not necessary if you correctly use the iPads. iPads are the standard in the industry and should be used in professional settings. In order to apply the iPad, you ask the client to look up and you cover the client's bottom lashes completely. So you ask the client to look up and then you completely cover the client's bottom lashes. It may seem as though the iPad is somewhat in her eye, but it's not gonna end up there. I noticed a few strands above the iPad on this eye, so I'm going to go ahead and do this one over. Okay. You then ask the client to close her eyes and please keep them closed. So now I notice my iPad isn't completely flat. I'm going to go ahead and flatten it out with my finger or the tweezer. Okay. And what you also want to do is just make sure there are no hairs underneath. Keep your eyes closed. You want to encourage the client to keep her eyes closed because you don't want to work on the client with tweezers while her eyes are open because that's just too much risk. So whenever you have tweezers in your hand, the client's eyes should be closed. The other issue is that once you start to apply glue, you know it contains fumes. So if the client opens her eyes while you're actively gluing the lashes on, her eyes are going to start to water, the iPad is going to get wet, then you got to change iPad. So going back to how we started the tutorial saying, hey, we actually want the client to fall asleep, you actually want the client to fall asleep. The biggest question. How do I know where to put what eyelash? There's something called lash numbering or lash mapping. This is where ahead of starting the person's lashes, we map out exactly where we want to put each number. So here on my lash tile, I have a seven, 10, 12, 15, and 17 millimeter set of lashes. We always start with the shortest lash in the inside of her eye. So I'm just going to freestyle number. Numbering goes back to styling. It's a personal choice. It goes into design. It goes into aesthetic. The hard rules for numbering are that you always start with shorter lashes because you want to mimic the lash pattern of a natural set of lashes. No natural set of lashes starts with a super long lash on the inside. So you want the inside lashes to always be significantly shorter than the middle or the outer. So we're going to start her with a seven or an eight. You always start with a seven millimeter or an eight millimeter lash. We have a seven on the tray. So I'm going to go ahead and number her right side. Again, it's freestyling. She told me she wanted them to go from short to long. So I'm going to do that. Start with the seven here and go ahead and just earmark my area for the 17s ahead of time because I know I want to save that space. 
and just fill in in the middle. A 10. And after seeing this, it's not much space left. I'm just going to do a 15. So it's going to be 7, 10, 15, and 17, which is going to create a dramatic effect. I'm going to now number the other side. A common error that I see is people choosing to work on one eye at a time. They'll tape down or put the iPad on this eye, number this eye, and then start lashing this eye. What is the problem with that? What if the fire alarm goes off? What if she receives an emergency call that she needs to leave? She's only going to have one eye done. So during the process, we do both eyes at the same time. And at the beginning of the session, we tape both eyes because again, we want her to be asleep. So we don't want to have to wake her up mid session and say, Hey, open up your eyes so I can tape it. Okay. Brushing. We could have an entire class on brushing. You want to brush upward and Patting something is not a brush. A brush indicates that the bristle has gone completely through the strands of hair. So this would enable you to break up any kind of clump and help you see any lashes that you haven't lashed. Brushing is critical. You wanna get very, very, very comfortable with brushing because it makes a tremendous difference in your outcome quality. So you want to brush up, not to hurt the client, but aggressively. And then you want to brush upward and outward. So brushing at this point is priming the lashes for the application. You might see this plastic ring on my finger and think, what is this? This is called a glue ring. This is another strategy for saving time and having a succinct workspace to have the glue right here accessible. Again, not to have another container of glue sitting on the counter or a surface. Okay, so we really don't need much glue. One drop is plenty. So we've greeted the client. We've talked to her about what kind of lashes she wants. We've identified those lashes and placed them out. We have her tongue tucked in, she's comfortable. We have her iPads on, they're numbered, we've brushed them. And so now we're gonna start the lash application process. Big question, where do you start? You can start anywhere you want. Why? Because you've already numbered the area. So I can pick up a 15 and put a 15 there. I can pick up a 17 and put a 17 there. I can pick up a seven and put a seven there. I essentially already have a map. So let me just finish the side. Seven, 10, 15, 17. Numbering, again, to reiterate it, is a personal choice and a styling decision, okay? If she wanted something more conservative, we could have ended with 14s or 13s. Um, if she wanted something super short, we could have maybe did 12s and 13s. If she wanted something super dramatic, we could have done 18s. So you really want to have a conversation with the client about what she wants. Lash pickup. This is very important and you may need to rewind to see this several times. One thing that's cool about the lash tile is that it fans your lashes for you. Whereas on a tray, they would just be straight. The fan, the, the lash tile help, helps separate them. So one thing that's convenient about the lash tile is that it fans your lashes for you. So instead of them being just so straight up on the tray with the tile, they're already fanned so you can access them more easily. You need to put the tile at an angle. Why? Because you need to pick up at an angle. Why? Because you need to place at an angle. Okay? 
Do you notice how the lash is at an angle? Versus something like this, or versus this. Why is that important? Because at this angle, I have leverage to place the lash anywhere, and I have freedom range of hand motion. If the lash is like this, how would I put it on her? Okay, so we have to have the lash outward. You may have noticed some glue residue on here despite the fact that I already sanitized this tool. It's just glue residue. You can scrape it off with your finger or you can use acetone, acetone as found in nail polish remover to break it down and remove it. The problem with acetone is that it has very, very strong fumes. So sometimes it's best to just scrape it off and keep working. If it's dry, you can scrape it off. Okay, you're gonna to have to practice pick up for at least 30 minutes to an hour because you're gonna to have to make sure you're picking up at an angle. Okay, the next issue in lashes is isolation. These are not cluster eyelash extensions. The application strategy for semi-permanent eyelash extensions is strand to strand, meaning we are applying a strand extension to her natural strand. We are applying a strand extension to her natural strand of lashes. In order to do that, we have to isolate the strand. If you can see that, you can see that it's completely isolated and unencumbered. I'm then able to grab a lash on an angle, dip it in glue, and then place it. Okay, so what we can notice about the lash that I just put on is that it's one lash extension to one natural strand Nothing looks thick, nothing is stuck together, and it's also freestanding and movable. This is what would be considered a successful extension, okay? From there, we just keep applying. We never work on two lashes right next to each other, we always skip around. Now, there you may have noticed me wipe off some excessive glue. So let's go over that in detail. I pick up my strand. I dip it in the glue you may be able to see some bumps of glue. I don't want any bumps or clumps of glue. So what I'm doing is wiping the excessive glue onto the iPad. You put the lash on and you let it go. You never go back and retouch the lash. So now, I'm just gonna apply 15 lashes to each eye. I'm not gonna be talking, and then I'm gonna show you where I'm at.
Okay, so we've made some progress. And to iterate, brushing is extremely critical. Okay, notice how I'm brushing outwards like before and I'm brushing upwards. So I would say she's about 50% done. Okay, this product is called paper tape. So what we're doing now is using some paper tape. Sometimes when you're doing eyelash extensions, as the lashes become fuller and fuller, it becomes difficult to see the lashes. So what we're gonna do is use the tape to help us find any lashes that we might have missed. I'm also gonna show you some other things we can use the tape for. Okay, so I just removed some tabs of tape and put them on my hand because I'm about to use them on her eyelashes. So what I'm gonna do right now is take a piece of tape and just pull back the tips. Take another piece, pull back the tips. So as you can see, what that does is help further expose the lashes that are unlashed. It also takes the other lashes out of our way so we can see better and work faster to hurry up and finish her. So I'm gonna resume putting lashes on her. So we're still going to be isolating and we're still going to be applying the eyelash extension strand to strand. One thing I want to talk about right now are the details related to isolating. One thing to realize about the tweezers is that you can control the tweezers from about halfway through. So what we don't do is hold the tweezers all the way down here because the whole point of having longer tweezers is to have space to control the tweezers and to also give you space so that your hand isn't directly in the client's eye, there's space, okay? So we're gonna hold the tweezers always about halfway through. How do you isolate? You can start from pretty much anywhere but the most important point is that the final lash be fully free and not touching anything unencumbered. So for example, that would be considered an isolated lash, the one lash by itself. Another point I wanna make is that I'm not applying pressure to her forehead. There's space right here. So what you don't wanna be doing is isolating and putting all this pressure on your client's hand because you become very heavy. Generally speaking, you want to control your own weight and balance. So you're never using the person's head to hold your hands. So isolation is light. You go in. You open your tweezer. You pick up. Drag it through the glue. and attach. Another point I wanna make is, you never fight with the lash. If you cannot isolate one lash, you move on to the next lash. How close do you put the eyelash extension on? As close as possible to the base without actually touching the person's skin. So I would say you leave about a millimeter of space. Another question is how much glue and where do you put the glue?
we pick up the lash at the very top on a slant and we put glue on the bottom third of the eyelash extension, the bottom third. In addition to the fact that I have glue on the bottom third, when I wipe on this iPad, I'm actually kind of spreading the glue along the lash while wiping off the excess glue. I place the lash on, let it go. I do not touch it again, let it go. Move on to a new area or the other eye. Notice that this is a two-handed procedure, meaning that there is no space for you to be on the phone or anything like that. Conversation with clients. Some people talk with their nose, face, mouth. If, I'm, if I talk like this, I can't do lashes at the same time. If she talks, you know, and moves her face and her eyebrows and her nose and how some people talk, like she, she wouldn't be able to get through this. So this is why I highly advise that you make the environment super comfortable so the client naturally falls asleep so you can, you can work. Another thing is that you don't want to have to deal with a difficult client. If her phone is ringing a lot, if she wants to talk, if she's moving around a lot, the client has to stay still. Remember, you are dealing with glue and tweezers and doing very detailed strand by strand work. I don't know if anyone noticed, I just dropped the, I picked it up, I fumbled the lash. Instead of trying to pick the lash back up, I'm gonna throw it to the side and just grab a new lash. Okay, so not that I'm done with her full set, but I just need a broader view. So for right now, I'm gonna take this piece of tape off. Okay, there are other things that we can use tape for. For example, some people have eyelashes that point downward, or some people might have very thick eyelids, or for some people, for some reason, you can't see the very bottom of their eyelid where the eyelashes are. Sometimes people's lashes grow in layers and you need to be able to see the lash line more clearly. So what we do is we use tape to manipulate the eyelid to pull it back to help with the lash application process. So you see how here, this would move this back some and give me more leverage to work on her lashes because they would be more upright. Okay, so you can do this without causing the client any discomfort. And this is especially helpful, and this is especially helpful if the client has eyelashes that grow downward. So we're gonna just pull this back slightly. Okay, and then sometimes you can use double strategy, so I can have that tape pulling there and tape back for, if example, I'm trying to access that corner over there. So we keep lashing. So you might be thinking, okay, that lash came off. Sometimes the lashes might fall off during this process. So that's why we're gonna talk more about brushing 
and making sure the lashes are all on good before the client leaves. How many lashes should you put on a client? I would say 60 to 100 per eye. You might be thinking, okay, well, what if the client wants a natural full set or something light? The problem is that the client is going to lose two to three eyelash extensions a day, which means over the course of seven days a week, she would lose 21 eyelashes. So if you decided to only put 30, for example, because you wanted to have a natural look, by the end of the week, she would be calling you saying all of my lashes fell off. So when you're doing semi-permanent eyelash extensions, the concept is that the client should be on a three to four week fill cycle schedule, not every seven days because it makes the service not practical. So you really want to take time and do full work. Okay, so now I seem to be experiencing some stickiness. We talked about this. Whenever you notice that the lash is sticking to the tweezers, there's something wrong and this whole thing needs to be clean. How do you remove sticky glue from tweezers? Acetone. Here we just have some cheap Walgreens nail polish remover. It also works. I like these little cup things because they have a sponge built in so I can just stab my tweezers in and out and it'll clean them. The fumes are strong so I'm doing, the, doing it away from the client. Okay, so my tweezers are looking better. Posture. You don't want to be slant over like this for two hours. You want to be sitting upright. So I want to focus on this area over here because a lot of times lash checks have problems with the corners. When you're doing a corner, if I'm doing this corner, I'm going to kind of put my butt more in this direction to give me leverage for that area. So shift your body. Remember I said you can't be shifting the clients.
Merlin, how are you feeling? Everything okay? Yes. You can go good. ahead and sit up. Here's a mascara wand you can use to brush your lashes. Don't be afraid to touch them. Okay. And here is a mirror. You can take a look-see. Yes, so those are 15s and 17s. Um, yeah, and they, they look great on you. In fact, so you can kind of practice brushing them. You can touch them. Don't feel like if you touch them, they're going to just fall off. Yeah,